Hello, everyone. I'm Sybil Starr. And I'm here to give the astrology forecast for the new moon solar eclipse in Libra that occurs on October 2nd, 2024. Now, the maximum of the eclipse is at 1146 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and the eclipse lasts seven minutes and 24 seconds. This is an annular eclipse. So there is a ring of fire behind this eclipse. Let me show you the uh, image of an annular Okay, so this is an annular eclipse. It uh, so it, it has it's what's called a ring of fire, and the reason that it's not the light is not completely blocked out is because the moon is what is at is called apogee, which means that it is the it is a, a time when the moon is actually the furthest away from Earth, and so the moon does not cover the light of the sun completely as it would in a total eclipse. So we have this beautiful ring of fire here. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Stop share. There we go. All right. So, um, the, um, uh, and so as I was saying, this, this eclipse, uh, is visible in the Southern hemisphere, uh, and it's visible in South America, the Pacific and Atlantic oceans and Antarctica. Um, and normally, as we said, you know, the, the sun is 400 times larger than earth while the moon is 400 times closer. So in a, in a, total eclipse, the complete light of the sun is covered by the moon. But like I said, we have an annular. And, and so the moon just is, isn't 400 times uh, closer, it's further away. So it does not completely cover the light of the sun. And I think a great analogy for this is that it is about the light of our soul shining through the darkness as well as the divine light of creator that and protection of creator. And uh, it also appears as a cauldron where magic is created in the dark of the void. And we might experience strong activity in the ring of fire. An annular eclipse is called a ring of fire. And so, you know, there is a ring of fire of volcanoes that are under the ocean off of the West Coast. And, you know, eclipses often produce uh, earth changes, weather events. So there might actually be some Thing happening on the West Coast uh, or just simple earthquakes. All right. So uh, just, re just more information on an eclipse. Uh, everything, uh, everything in our solar system is are made from photons of the sun. So when the light of the sun is blocked, it allows for more cosmic energy to flow into our field and it disturbs the electromagnetic field of Mother Earth which often stimulates weather crises and earth changes. Eclipses are harbingers of change. They bring to light what has been hidden. And this is what is called a south node lunar eclipse, uh, meaning that the uh, sun and moon are conjunct um, the south node of the moon. And so what this means is a, a lunar eclipse always occurs at a new moon. And a new moon is about new beginnings. But when it is conjunct the south node, it indicates that there needs to be, be a release of old material before the new beginning can occur. Now, Charles Jane, he says that events that occur in the days around an eclipse are always memorable. Events that occur seven to 10 days before the eclipse work out in an unexpected fashion and can be fated. Um, and the uh, energy of the eclipse can last up to seven months with because it's a seven minute eclipse. So you, you kind of do a, a, a a month for a minute. So up to this could be have powerful impacts for the next seven months. All right. All right. Now we're going to look at the actual chart of the new moon. All right. All right. So here is the chart of the new moon. 
So like I said, the new, the, uh, the new moon is on October 2nd at 1149 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, it's still in the throes of the eclipse. It's just that a few minutes earlier, the eclipse would have his maximum fullness. But anyway, so this eclipse occurs at 10 degrees, three minutes of Libra. Got the sun and the moon here. We've got a whole bunch of Libra here, as you can see. So the, the sun and the moon are conjunct the south node. They are conjunct um, Black Moon Lilith and also conjunct Mercury, God of the Mind. Now, this eclipse is in a square to uh, Mars, Mars in Cancer here. And Mars is actually opposite the asteroid series. Now, the ruler of this eclipse is Libra, is uh, the ruler of Libra is Venus. And Venus is up here at 11 degrees of Scorpio. And Venus is in a grand trine. She trines Saturn here, Saturn at 14 degrees of Pisces, which is then trine Mars, okay? And back to trining Venus, okay? But Mars is also opposite Ceres, which makes a kite. All right, let's see what else that I want. I am going to talk about something else that's not actually in this chart, but that is coming because this is an eclipse and Mars is on the move. By the end of the month, Mars will be in an opposition to Pluto. And I feel like it's really important to talk about that as part of the eclipse energy. Uh, and I'll talk even more about it at the full moon. All right. Okay, so... All right, so the question is now, what does all of that mean? All right, so as I said, the new moon occurs uh, at 10 degrees, three minutes of Libra at 11.49 a.m. Pacific. So if you have planets or angles anywhere from seven to 13 degrees, degrees of Libra or Aries is when it is the most potent. Libra is the most potent. The opposition is the second most potent, but often, but also if it's square, it squares planets in Cancer or Capricorn or trines other air signs, a Gemini and Aquarius. These are the ones that are going to have the most impact from this particular eclipse. All right. So what is Libra? Lots of energy in Libra. So Libra is the sign of the scales. It's about balance. It's And the thing is, Libra is seeking balance. It's not that Libra is balance. It is seeking balance. And I always love to talk about that, um, uh, the a tarot card in the um to, in the Crowley deck the Libra card is called adjustment and it is the goddess Themis and she is standing on the tip of the sword and so what this tells us it is that tip of the sword is where we have balance so it's a very small um very minute place <laughs> and that's why it's so easy to get out of balance and so it's about balance between self and other. Are we giving too much? Are we taking too much? Libra often overcompromises to keep the peace and can be conflict avoidant, which not dealing with conflict will bring more disharmony uh, because the imbalance is still there, just not dealing with it. OK, so it's really important to um, to deal with conflict as it shows up because the, it brings us back into balance by doing it. OK, uh, and an imbalance between light and dark, work and play, you know, all the dualities come into focus and in how to find our place in the center. The Egyptian goddess Ma'at is associated with Libra, and she is the goddess that weighs your heart against her feather of truth and divine order at the end of life, according to Egyptian cosmology. And so, and to know what is really true, one needs to be at peace with yourself, okay? The heart needs to be at peace. And so that is another archetypal energy of Libra. It is about seeking inner peace and serenity, being centered within yourself. You know, we may get drawn into outer conflicts, but the truth always lies within, no matter what is going on in the outer world. And to come back into the stillness of the center to know what is true. 
And it brings in the concept of heart coherence. It's when our hearts, minds, and bodies are at one. We feel a deep connection with ourselves and others. And when we feel this connection, not only within ourselves, but to our environment and even to Mother Earth, we are actually in coherence. And that is really what the whole goal is about. And, and actually, this image behind me, you can't see it really well, but it's really about coherence heart coherence, the, the toroidal energy, that's electromagnetic field that surrounds our heart when it is in coherence, in alignment with uh, our, when everything is in alignment, okay? A Libra is about beauty and aesthetics. Libra is a very kind and empathetic kind uh, um, energetically. Many counselors are have Libra and energy. You know, empathy is an is an ability to be with someone and experience um not to be with someone and feel their pain without taking it on as your own. You know, as they say, you know, walk a mile in my shoes. That is a very empathetic kind of a um uh, of a of a quote of a statement. Okay. Um, Libra is very relationship oriented. There is a real deep soul connection. There is a deep need for soul connection with others. Um, and Libra is also, you know, the, the, um, it is widely conjunct the uh, supergalactic center, which is at two degrees, uh, two degrees, I believe, 23 minutes of Libra right now, which is so much about the teaching of the mirror reflection. Libra is about relationship. And it is that place of, you know, that I am another, that you are another me. And that everything that happens in our lives actually is a reflection of what is going on internally and is then mirrored back to us. Okay. And so it's not only our personal relationships, but the external world is a reflection of what is in our hearts. And so once again, there is that, you know, the, you know, the scales of finding that balance. So there is a need to be at peace with ourselves, to be balanced and centered. And <clears throat> some of the shadows of Libra, number one, is the comparison of self to others. That is a really big one for Libra um, because often they... Libra doesn't recognize that the mirror is showing them something about themselves. And it could be something really wonderful, not just not just our our issues, but um, that uh, so that's why it's so important to um, uh, encourage others and to be supportive of others in their success and um and to know they're just another you. There's someone else who is putting that energy out in the field that, uh, and you're part of it, okay? It's about uh, another shadow is codependent relationships. Libra is said to not know who they are without someone to mirror it back to them. So there can be a fear of being alone because they don't know who they are when they are alone. So it's really important for Libra to have periods of aloneness, to be in relationship with themselves, not just in relationship with others. Okay. All right. As I showed you this, uh, is, this, um, new moon uh, and solar eclipse is conjunct Mercury, god of the mind. And Mercury in Libra is very much about diplomacy and tact. Kind and empathetic communication is more important than ever, especially in these, these uh, challenging and divisive times. And it's important with Libra and uh, Mercury and Libra to listen as well as speak. And listening might even be more important. Libra, Mercury and Libra is able to see both sides of a situation, uh, which is like paradox. You know, for one thing to be true does not make the opposite false. Both perspectives are true, are, have, have an element of truth, okay? And which leads to Libra's infamous um, ability to be indecisive because they can see both truths, you know, um, because they might, both choices are good or both choices are not good, you know. 
All right. Many judges have Libran energy to determine what is actually fair and just. Justice is a fair and uh, Fair, fairness and justice are also two words that really align with Libra because it's about balancing the scales. And often, you know, what is fair and what is just is not always about equality. Uh, it's, it's, it's what it takes to balance that scale, okay? And uh, it's the goddess Themis. I talked about her in that tarot card. She, there's an image of her, a statue of her, uh, standing, um, sitting outside the uh, Supreme Court. Um, she is the goddess of justice. And so there is an image of her with her scales uh, outside the Supreme Court. Supreme Court. Now, there is a really interesting fixed star that is conjunct this uh, solar eclipse, and that is the star Parima. That's P-O-R-R-I-M-A in Le at, it's at 25, excuse me, 10 degrees, 25 minutes of Libra, and it is in the constellation of Virgo. And this star is named after the Roman goddess of prophecy named Parima. And her priestesses were oracles. And so this south node lunar eclipse may have prophetic dreams or downloads. And of course, also conjunct Mercury. And Mercury is messenger of the gods. And so with this conjunction, it can make having uh, divine messages come through. Uh, whether in dreams, whether in downloads, however it shows up, but there may be some messages messages from the gods coming through um, in relation to prophecy. All right, uh, this new moon is also conjunct Black Moon Lilith, and Black Moon Lilith brings up shadow material related to Libra, which is a, what we talked about, codependence and fear of being alone. It may also show us where our current relationships are out of balance or feel unfair. So with some guidance around how to bring them back into balance and some of our deepest desires may also surface. Now, as I showed you, this new moon is also conjunct the south node um, and the nodes have to do with destiny. They've been traveling through Aries and Libra um, for over a year now actually let's see in i believe it's it's in january they're going to change signs in, once again and they move backwards so they'll be going into pisces and virgo in january so we only have a few months left of the aries libra axis but now this is this uh, solar eclipse is conjunct the south node and so, like I said, you know, for it's about a new beginning, but something needs to be released before the new beginning can happen. And so Libra is so much about relationship. So we may be releasing old relationships or situations where you no longer resonate. And to recognize that people enter and leave your life based on vibration. You may no longer resonate, may not be a vibrational fit with someone that you have maybe been for a long time. And it's just, it's, and it doesn't mean there's uh, it, any hard feelings. It's just that they're just not a vibrational fit anymore. Also, old karmic relationships from the past may show up for closure as new ones emerge. I am certainly having that happen, old relationships showing up. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> but there's also a potential for renewal of current partnerships. But I think one of the most important aspects of the Libra Aries axis is about healing the divide. Um, you know, it are, there is so much divisiveness in our country right now. And the thing is, when we heal, we come into wholeness. We heal the divide and come into wholeness within ourselves and with others. And it is asking us to integrate our shadow material so that we no longer project the darkness outward. We heal the polarity consciousness, the us versus them mentality. And when we own our fear, 
anger, shame, judgment, or any other low vibrational emotions, and then allow ourselves to feel it because we must feel it to heal it. And then allows us to release it and no longer project it onto others. Let's just say, for example, um, you know, we, we are angry and our partner did something or somebody did something. Um, <clears throat> but the truth of it is, whatever that emotion is, it belongs to us. Our anger got triggered on some level. There's and and it's about a trauma. It's a trauma with inside of us that is that is ready to heal, coming to the surface and wants attention. And when we can own it and feel it and release it, then we understand it and we can let it go. Okay. It is when we have have balance of dark and light within, it brings inner peace. And there's this beautiful quote here from Peace Pilgrim. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but back in the 70s, she was a spiritual leader and mystic who walked all over the United States for peace. Okay. Anyway, she says, when you find peace within yourself, you become the kind of person who can live at peace with others. Because that is the truth. To have peace in the world, we must first be at peace with ourselves. And then we must be the peace to have peace in the world. But it all starts within. Now, this um, eclipse is square Mars in Cancer. And Mars is not about peace. <laughs> you know, Mars is a warrior, is action oriented and represents our direction in life. Now, Mars transiting in Cancer is normally calm and dependable, but can be moved to action by emotions. You know, cancer is the sign of the mother. And I call Mars in cancer, the mama bear aspect. It's like, it's it, because Mars is a warrior, but warriors you know, are protectors. That's really their function is protection, not so much aggression. And so it's the, it, uh, it, it kind of like gets, I would say, our hackles up when um, someone or something that we love is um you you feel needs protection that um so it is a protector of what you love and or who you love and it can be very defensive and take things i know that what i was looking for is threatened when something that you love is threatened then it it may and and, and it's one of those things that, like going along peaceful and calm, but, but if, uh, let's say your dog gets attacked by another dog, I mean, you're going to be right in there getting that dog, you know, make it, getting that dog safe, protecting your dog. Okay. So, but it can be very defensive and take things personally that not, that are not meant to be, then an argument can pursue. So it's really important to, um, you know, protect what you love, uh, but to not take things personally that are not meant to be that way. Okay. All right. Uh, Mars is always a catalyst and can provoke a response and squares bring high levels of tension. A square is a 90 degree angle. It's a challenging aspect and it is, um, it's compulsive. It's kind of like once it, it, it's, it's, it's like you, it's something you can't put down until you deal with it. Okay. All right. It, and it can bring, I feel like what it's going to be bringing uh, is a couple of things. One is unresolved conflict uh, in our personal lives may appear. And also, you know, we know there is a high amount of conflict in the field and uh, divisiveness and people really, I'm going to say, taking things personally that maybe are not meant personally. And there is a lot of uh, angry discussions going on and a lot of projection. I'm going to really put that in. There is a tremendous amount of projection going on in the field. And so I recently had a conversation with a woman who said that she hate, hate, hated a political, a certain political candidate in the U.S. election. She then said that she would not be shamed for feeling that way. And so I asked her, I said, how it felt 
to feel that much hatred in her heart. And is that how she wanted to feel? I'm not going to uh, give you her response, but um, because she wanted to feel that way. But you, the truth of it is hatred hurts us as much as it does. Actually, it hurts us more than the person who is hated upon because they don't even really always feel it. And it, but it is a, it is a, like an energy that, that is grows in us that really impacts everything and around us. It is an emotion that we're putting out in the field. And it is so important to remember that we are creating the world at every moment by the choices we make. And, um, and we can choose to hate or we can choose to not hate. We can choose to let the hate go and understand that what lies below it is fear and to do what we can to really heal our hearts about around this hatred that is just really in the field that is being manipulated by those in power because they are the ones that are served by it. Certainly we are not. Anyway, Maya Angelou said, hate, hate. It has caused a lot of problems in the world but has not solved one yet. And to know that is absolutely true. There's people I don't like, but I can honestly say there's no one that I hate or nothing that I hate because I know everything comes from creator and everyone has a role to play. It's so important to have respectful conversations about our differences of opinion without making it personal. Using nonviolent communication, this was a really big teaching for me in the pandemic to really learn how to communicate, how to listen, and how to understand that each one of us are different and we have a different perspective. And that's actually why we're here. If we're, you know, each one of them uh, having a different face of creator, having a different experience from a different perspective, and to be able to share it with, re with uh, respect. All right. And the awareness that people cannot hear what is said if the first thing is something aggressive or unkind. Like I said, the, the Mercury in Libra is so much about listening, being kind and empathetic it's, and to find common ground, because the only way to heal our world is through finding common ground, because we will find no one with whom we agree 100 percent because we each have our own perspective. You know, this Mars and Cancer square Mercury can really be touchy and defensive and argumentative. So it's really important to be kind. And if you must choose to be right or to be kind, it's always right to be kind. I really like that a lot. And, and some things, are they're, they're just not worth fighting about. Just let it go. Okay. All right. Now, uh, this Mars at 15 degrees of uh, Cancer is also conjunct the sun in the United States. Uh, uh, and, um, and the sun in the United States is like 13, 13 degrees. So it's a two degree difference, but it's there. And it's also, of course, conjunct the star Sirius, which we're going to talk about a little further down. But, you know, what is going on in the external world is that, you know, we are getting very close to World War Three. I mean, we're just really, you know, and, and with Russia, uh, Russia is a nuclear power. And so I see this as poking the bear. Um, you know, one, I, this is a mama bear aspect and Russia is, you know, their symbol is a bear you know, the Russian bear, and we are definitely poking that bear. So there is the potential for war is escalating and also escalating in the Middle East. You know, we've just sent troops to the Middle East, American troops. So this is this is a really tense time. That's why it's so important to find your center, stay calm and speak with kindness, compassion, and um with kindness and compassion, right? And it's also in a T-square with Mars opposite Ceres. And Ceres is a C-E-R-E-S, the asteroid Ceres. She is a symbol for the great Earth Mother. And so this, this could also indicate weather events as Mother Earth is, um, I have to believe that Mother Earth 
is would not be happy if we had another war. So I feel like there is also, uh, Mother Earth is also involved in this. All right, now the Sabian symbol for this uh, new moon is uh, a professor peering over his glasses at his students. I feel like this is just uh, another piece of, of the deeper meaning of this eclipse. This eclipse, the, excuse me, this symbol speaks of the ability or the necessity of looking at people as humans and not through the lens of something learned from books or newspapers or what you read or saw to take off your glasses and look at them and look at them in the eye because there is so much propaganda in the field to turn people against each other. And, and, and for propaganda to be successful, it dehumanizes our enemy or our opponents. And because it's the only way that agenda works. And to rem remember that everybody here is part of the human family and to see people for who they really are, which is uh, remembering that each of us are a face of creator having this experience and carrying this spark of divinity of creator and that everyone here has a role as a at for, and some are absolutely catalysts for change in lightning rods. Okay. All right. Now, um, they talked about the grand water trine with Venus, Venus, Mars, and Saturn. Well, it actually becomes a kite when we bring Ceres and Capricorn in. So I feel like what this grand water trine is talking about is asking us, what are our deepest desires? And if you don't know, they may rise to the surface into conscious awareness and come into manifestation. This is also about having a deep emotional connection. Love in the form of a new romance or friendship may appear as Venus, the ruler of this eclipse, is part of this grand water trine. It may also be a time of increased creativity over the next six months. Now, Venus is conjunct a star called a crew in the constellation of crew, uh, which is the Southern Cross. And it is what, what it, this symbolizes is divine love. Um, there is a cosmology that says a crew is one of the most beautiful, uh, carries one of the most beautiful energies in our whole galaxy. It is the Christ consciousness, or we could just use the word divine love. Now it's trying Saturn and Saturn is um, conjunct the star uh, Eridanus in the, uh, or, or, not the star Eridanus, the star Ashenar in the constellation of Eridanus, also known as the river. And this means turbulent waters and stormy emotions, but it's also an initiation into grace. And to remind us that our work is to awaken the divine nature within. And, you know, in a water trine is very much about feeling and emotion. And the thing is, as we are in these times of great change and turbulence, it's so important to stay in our heart, in our heart coherence and to feel, to be able to feel what is passing through us Um and uh, that it is really a time of an initiation to into grace if we allow ourselves to feel. And of course, Mars is conjunct the star Sirius, the great mother and her unconditional love. Sirius is the shining one and she uplifts the mundane into something sacred. So to know this is very much when Sirius is involved that indicate and Sirius is our spiritual son. And the Egyptians believed that she was that Sirius is the celestial form of the goddess Isis. And um and she's and we're some believe that we are actually in a binary star system ourselves with Sirius. Off-world beings say when they see mother, when they see our sun, our solar system, they see it in a binary a system with Sirius. Okay. And then of course we have Ceres, um, the asteroid. And in Greece, Isis and the goddess Ceres were often combined. Um and so it is the love of the great mother, once again, conjunct the star Al Alathmar and Lyra, which means peaceful, but ready to protect if needed. 
And I would say this is very much the uh, some of the energy of this eclipse is peaceful, but ready to protect if needed. Okay. Now I did want to talk about what's happening later this month because it's so important because Mars is in motion, even though it's not in aspect at the eclipse, it's in motion. And I'll talk a lot more about it at the full moon, but this, the Mars is opposite Pluto for almost four months due to the Mars retrograde movement. And, um, cause Mars goes, uh, up to, I think it's like six degrees of, it, it goes, it goes from, let's see, it's at 15 degrees for this eclipse. And so it goes all through cancer. And so it's opposite Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. And I think the exact conjunction is like, um, November 2nd or 3rd, something like that, right before the election. And then uh, she moves into uh, Leo, um, or not, not she, Mars moves into Leo, goes up to six degrees. And of course, Pluto moves back into Aquarius on November 16th and will be there for the next 20 years. But this aspect, due to the retrograde motion, lasts almost six months, uh, not six months, uh, four months. So it's a lot of tension. Mars and Pluto opposite often means power struggles. Um, and so if you have planets in the late degrees of Cancer, Capricorn, or early degrees of Aquarius and Leo, this event may be particularly impactful to your own personal life. Um, Mars is the god of war and often brings conflict uh, into situations that are unresolved, as well as it brings up our free will, our ego, our egoic will, which is also known as free will choice. Pluto is the god of death and rebirth, the underworld, the deep unconscious. Pluto represents unhealed trauma, but also the place of our greatest treasure. And whenever Pluto's around, it says evolve or die. So this is this is what this is about. It's a power struggle for our own evolution. Okay. And it's about aligning our egoic will with divine will and the struggle that that takes. And divine will is actually our soul plan, our, our soul template. Uh, free will choice is actually what grows the soul in many ways. But the goal is ultimately to have our free will choice align with divine will or our soul template. And I see this as the tower card. Uh, in the Tarot, Mars is the tower card. Or, or Mars is associated with the tower card, but I see it just as much to be Mars, Pluto or Mars, Uranus, uh, because of the, it's the most healing card in the deck, but also brings a great storm. And so we might find power struggles in per, our personal lives or in the outer world as we are pushed into alignment. And it may be very uncomfortable when these two planets come together, it they can bring uh, violence, upheaval, and war. And like I said, we're all. I, I wouldn't take this so seriously if we, if I wasn't seeing what was going on in the outer world. That you know, uh, we are talking about sending long-range missiles to Ukraine to send deep into Russia. We see what is happening in the Middle East. Um, and we're now sending troops and arms. And so it's, you know, we're right on that, that edge there. And so it is, it, and it, it, it may come suddenly. So it is important to keep your center and stay calm and to know that we can impact the outcome of this destructive energy. It will be a complete metamorphosis, I feel, once this aspect is over, but we may be in the dark for a while until the butterfly emerges. And it will be an aspect for almost four months, including during the time of the election in the U.S. And so, of course, I, I can also see upheaval around that as well. The key for us is to, is to stay calm and centered, and know that a storm is coming, but it could well be the storm that clears the path so we can see our way forward. Trust the process and know that we are loved in every moment and can always ask for help. We are never alone. Be able to see people for who they are. And as we remember our own true divine nature, 
know that everyone and everything in our world is sacred. And that the more we are in coherence, we can bring our world back into coherence because it's the world reflects who we are for the external world is only a reflection of our inner world. And the more we have heart coherence with the world around us, with each other and with ourselves, we can bring the world out of the chaos into coherence. And as the old paradigm is crumbling, we need to create the new that is coming from a place of inner peace and love. And to know what matters most is what is in our hearts, for that is what creates our world. The truth of it is, no matter what happens, it's what is in our hearts that matter most. For when we carry peace in our hearts, we can bring peace to the world. The way of peace is the way of love. And love is the greatest power in the universe. But the truth is, is that love is really all there is. It is a time of divine remembrance of who we are to create the new world that has been prophesied. To know there are many prophecies. And, you know, there is also a prophecy that the next enlightened civilization will be here in North America. And we are going through, like I said, this time of metamorphosis, this time of great change, of clearing out old corruption so that we can build the new structures out of the decay and the old that is crumbling. And so, so to know that now is the time and to hold your center and send that peace and love out into the world, to your neighbors, to your family, and all over the world for that, and, and to come together to do this. And that is how we change the world. All right. So uh, sending you all many blessings. If you liked this video, please check like and subscribe. And if you are interested in a reading, all my information is in the description box. So once again, many blessings to all and namaste.